Separating fact from fiction. So let's get started with. Boat or scoop? Fish that live in the Arctic keep warm by swimming close together in big schools. If you believe that's how fish stay warm, go scoop. But if you think that story's a bit fishy, go poop. What do you think, rope? The answer is animal poop. Swimming together isn't going to help when the water's below freezing. So, some fish have a sort of antifreeze in their blood, like a car radiator. It prevents ice crystals from forming inside their bodies and allows them to live in salt water that's as cold as 27 degrees. <sighs> Next one. Poop or scoop. Mountain goats have suction cups on the bottom of their feet to help them keep their balance. If you believe that, go scoop. If you think we're trying to make a sucker out of you, go poop. The answer is poop, pure poop. Mountain goats aren't born with suction cups on their feet to help them stick to mountain sides. They learn to keep their balance when they're young by chasing each other across rocks. And they have soft padding around their hard, sharp hooves, which help them keep on their feet. Here we go, gang. Next one. Hope or scope. No animal has a more impressive range of defense weapons than the termite. What do you think? Does the termite really have all kinds of defensive weapons? If yes, then it's scope. If no, then it's poop. The answer is... It's the straight scope. Termites secrete all sorts of substances from irritants and toxins to anticoagulants and glues in order to stop ants on the attack. Some termite workers actually sacrifice themselves, kamikaze style, showering ants with acid and guts as they die. Here's another one. Poop or scope. The brightly colored Japanese sea slug uses its coloring to attract other sea life because it's naturally friendly. If you believe that, then you gotta go scope. If not, then, if you pardon the expression, you gotta go poop. And the answer is pure animal poop. Japanese sea slugs use their bright colors to warn off predators. That's because these creatures are very poisonous. A predator who ignores the warning will be sure to remember the next time around. Believe me. Well, kids, that's all we got for you today. If you got only one right, you're a party pooper. 
two, and you're a pooper scooper. Three makes you a super pooper scooper. If you got all four questions, you're what else? A super duper pooper scooper. I'm telling you, you can't get this kind of entertainment just anywhere. So please, join us again next time for Poop or Scoop. sailing the seven seas for an eternity and I'll tell ya I'm a bored stiff the only thing that saves me from going star craven mad is making up math puzzles using nothing but me own bones now watch closely and just do as I say or I'll surprise the life out of ye just watch me bones let me show you what I mean here be a picture of a fish I caught this morning. You try catching a bigger one with nothing but your own bones. If I were to ask you to move only two of me bones so that afterwards the fish were to look like a tree, could you do it? I should hope so, you miserable web-toed froggy boy of a man. Look. You see how easy it is, you swamp water swelling swines? You move two bones and change the picture from a fish to a tree. So, try your hand at another puzzle. I thought this one up a few years ago when I was a little less dead than I am today. There's an ice cube in a glass. Can you move only two of me bones so that you still got a glass, but the ice cube is no longer in it? When you're done, the glass can be on its side or upside down, so long as the ice cube isn't inside her. Now, get to work, you spider sponges. Remember, you can only move two bones. So it'll have to be clues then, will it? All right, for starters. The bottom of the glass will still be the bottom of the glass when you're done. You're gonna have to turn the glass upside down. Arr, I'm embarrassed to know ye. You can't figure out a simple bone puzzle without the help of a dead man. Look. See it now, do ye? Here it is again, in slow motion for the hard of thinking. Now that's what I call a bone-chillin' puzzle. It's games like these that make me the death of the party. Well, you try coming up with funny jokes when you've been as dead as long as I have. Wait a minute. Get back here. I got a better one. No, no. News with your anchor person, Dora Smarmy. Good evening, I'm Dora Smarmy, and welcome to Distraction News, where we give you the news and then ask you five questions about what we've reported. So make sure you're not distracted. And now, our top story today, dinosaurs. Ah! Sorry, ever since I saw Godzilla, I've had that reaction. Dinosaurs first appeared on the Earth during the Mesozoic Era, some 200 million years ago. The word dinosaur means terrible lizard. 
Wild dinosaurs were some of the largest creatures in history. There were some that were as small as a dog. The king of all the dinosaurs was the Tyrannosaurus Rex, which was the largest meat-eating animal ever to live on land. Then there was the very lovely Triceratops, who, although kind of scary looking, was a plant eater who would never attack a human, if there were humans back then, which there weren't. There are many theories on how the dinosaurs died out, one main one being that a giant meteor hit the earth, killing them all. Okay, let's see how well you were able to remember the facts. And be sure to count how many you get right, because, well, I'm tired of doing everything for you. Here goes. Dinosaurs existed during the Metallica era, the Mesozoic era, or the Mesolatodipers era. The answer is the Mesozoic era. What does the word dinosaur mean? Terrible gizzard, terrible wizard, or terrible lizard? The answer is terrible lizard. The Triceratops was a meat eater, a bad dresser, or a vegetarian. The answer is a vegetarian. The largest meat-eating land animal was the T-bone, the T-rex, or the carnivorex. The answer is the T-rex, or Tyrannosaurus rex. And lastly, how small could a dinosaur be? As small as a porta potty as small as a school bus, or as small as a dog? The answer is dog. So, how did you do? If you got any wrong, I want you to go clean your room right now. If you got them all right, clean your room anyway. Give your poor mom a break. Well, that's all the time we have for today, but remember, don't ever let anything distract you from watching Distraction News. So long. This has been Distraction News with your favorite cardboard cutout anchor person, Dora Smarmy. and Sage. They're like identical twins. <laughs> they even look alike. Anyway, even though they like totally look alike, if you totally scoot up to the screen real close, you'll see ten differences on each side of the picture. Today they're at a barbecue. Think you can find the differences? Awesome! You got 60 seconds. Actually, knowing Paige and Sage, I'm talking burnt. Okay, let's check out what we found. Pools, different colors. Paige has a pool skimmer. Sage has a lifesaver. Paige is trying to cook hamburgers, and Sage is grilling fish. And look at tablecloths, checked, and solid. Their pinwheels and swings are totally different, and so are their flowers. Beauteous. Sage has a croquet mallet, and Paige has a badminton racket, <laughs> whatever that is. And the patios, one stone, one brick. Both ugly. And duh, their barbecues are different. So, how'd you do? Did you get all ten? Yeah, me too. As if. <laughs> I'll see you later, G's. Ciao!
Captain Bob with a different kind of cool running. I can't get back to my beautiful home in Jamaica because I'm stuck in this tank. No worries, man. I got my Rasta sub and my dread swinging to the music. Look at this. Can you help Captain Bob? He's jamming in his soul. Okay, here's the deal. Now I'm gonna show you three things. And you got to tell me what they all got in common. But you got to do it before the water runs out of my tank. Let's go, gang. We got to get jamming. Use your eyes, use your brain. Before his go down the train. Like I said, we got three things. We got a circus, a married couple, and the planet Saturn. What do they all have in common? Quick, the levels drop it. A circus, a married couple, and the planet Saturn. We're almost at the bottom, man. Do you see it now? They're all teams with rings. What a hoot! A circus has a ring and a ringmaster. A married couple has rings and the planet Saturn has rings too. Now this is fun. Next clue. Before all fall hits the bottom, find what these we got in common. What's this now? We got a wave, a heart, and a dinner plate. What do they all have in common? Dig hard. The watcher's already running away. Come on, people. You got a way, a heart, and a dinner plate. Hurry. That train big lagging. Time's up, man. Your old things that break. Ain't that grand, man? A wave breaks on the beach. A heart breaks. And a dinner plate breaks too. Smashing! Well, that's it for today. Join me in my take next time for another round. We have gotten more. Now he's jamming in his song.
Lens McCracken, Photo Snoop. I cover the crime beat armed only with my camera and my smarts. Some say it's all camera and no smarts. To them I say, you got it, baby. So come on in and sit down, kid. I'm just looking at my latest batch of photo clues and I need your help figuring them out. Once we have the clues, watch in amazement as I use my unusual gift for deductive reasoning to solve the crime. It was a hot and sultry day. The Hawaiian luau party went wrong. In fact, it was a disaster. And that's why I call this case, the case of the Hawaiian luau party disaster. Check out these photo clues and see what you get. Holy moly, I zoomed in way too close here. I'm all ears if you've got any ideas. How about even a kernel of an idea? Hmm, this one really squashes me. Figuring this one out isn't as easy as catching flies, I tell you. You think you might know? Ouch, that's a prickly one. Although I can almost taste it, it's a sweet and juicy clue, all right. Take your time, dollface, and study them all carefully. Okay, I'm not giving up until I get all of these. <sighs> all right, let's try my darkroom computer, the Solutionator. So, here's the first close-up. Did you figure it out? It's a corn on the cob. Well, that was no picnic. What's the next photo? Yeah, I'd sure be crushed if I couldn't get it. A fly swatter. But I haven't squished the life out of this case yet. Let's take a bite out of this next one. So, here's the close-up. Hmm. It's a pineapple. How tropical. I mean, typical. Well, the solution practically speaks for itself. Okay, a corn farmer from Iowa got a hankering for something sweet to eat. He decided he had to have a pineapple. His craving was so strong, he jumped on a plane and flew to Hawaii. While in Hawaii, he attended a luau party where he traded some of his ears of corn for the delicious pineapple. When they sliced open the pineapple, it attracted flies. The farmer tried to squash the flies with a fly swatter. And as he was waving the fly swatter around, the Hawaiian girls in the grass skirts thought it was a new dance. Everybody started doing the crazy new fly swatter dance, which scared the luau pig who jumped out of his pen. Then the pig tackled the Hawaiian girl dancer and wearing a grass skirt ran away. And as everybody knows, you can't have a luau party without a luau pig. So that's why the party was a disaster. Come on, that wasn't hard, that was easy. Easy, that is. If you're the crime-fighting genius, Lens McCracken, photo snoop. It's time for Crash Box Rewind, where we flash back through the show and remind you how smart you really are. <laughs> We got a circus, a marriage couple, and the planet Saturn. Two old teens with rings. What a hoot! Dinosaurs first appeared on the Earth during the Mesozoic era, some 200 million years ago. The word dinosaur means terrible lizard. Can you move only two of me bones so that you still got a glass, but the ice cube is no longer in it? See it now, do ye? Japanese sea slugs use their bright colors to warn off predators. That's because these creatures are very poisonous. A predator who ignores the warning will be sure to remember the next time around. Believe me. Well, that's it for now. See you next time. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.